Of course, AI is already massive, but the reality is that we are still at the beginning of what might be the most important technology movement in human history. The dawn of the next industrial age, an age of agentic computing. And just like with previous technology revolutions, the era of deep learning has created the need for a new operating system that can help transform AI infrastructure into simple to use and scalable intelligent machinery. So let's start with the basics. Why an operating system and why now? To us, it's become abundantly clear that the ways in which deep learning workloads are computing look absolutely nothing like the business systems of yesterday. And 10 to 20 years ago, not a single organization could anticipate the scale and the velocity at which these AI systems now compute. We're quickly shifting to an age where there will be millions of GPUs and every traditional system will break under the weight of this computing power because they were never designed for this scale or this intensity. GPUs not just in one data center, but creating a computing fabric that extends from robots at the edge to AI factories in the cloud, creating a continuous loop of inference and fine tuning. Now these GPUs aren't running conventional applications, they're powering trillions of AI agents that need to be fed with an enormous amount of data. Not classic database data that businesses use, but rich data types coming from sensors that give AI a view into the natural world. Imagery, video, free text, telemetry, and not a terabyte scale, but an exabyte scale. All of this needs to be made available on the fastest possible storage and database infrastructure in order to keep GPUs productive. Now it's hard enough to make sure that data is captured in real time at this new level of scale. Data then needs to be enriched and contextualized and analyzed also in real time. So batch processing doesn't work anymore. And it's no longer about big data, but rather about big metadata. And that's because once every aspect of how we work and live is enhanced with artificial intelligence, AI will need the most current view of the greatest amount of contextualized data in order to provide the greatest level of value. Okay, so then what needs to change? Well, that answers pretty much everything. The AI pioneers realized that by combining massive amounts of data with new parallel hardware, it'd be possible to develop computer level of intelligence. So we needed to weave this level of parallelism and data acceleration into every aspect of an AI operating system. Vast advantage is that we started relatively late. We founded the company only in 2016, actually within about a month or so from when OpenAI was founded. And back then we had the chance to study the work of the world's leading AI research labs, which then led us to taking a blank sheet of paper approach to how data and intelligence would need to interact if the deep learning technologies that were being developed then actually would transform the world. So everything was about to change very quickly, and we knew that these applications would need an operating system to unlock the potential of AI machinery. So where do we start? Well, Vass is a student of systems architectures, so much so that in our early days, we didn't even write a single line of code for the first year. Instead, we took the time to study the trade-offs of existing systems that were popular at that time. And as we started to understand why pipelines were so complex and why they weren't scalable and why scalable systems couldn't analyze data in real time, what we realized is that almost every design decision was rooted deeply in a systems architecture that was popularized by Google in 2003. This is called the shared nothing architecture. This architecture is very well known to anyone that's been in distributed systems take a data set, you break it into a bunch of partitions, you spread them across a bunch of commodity servers, and then you scale out these servers to get to whatever compute or storage capacity that you need. Google's work has had a profound impact on the world. And today, virtually every database system, every file system, every big data processing system, and even every hyper-converged computing system leverages this architecture to achieve even modest levels of scale. So the question is, why does this architecture have so much difficulty scaling, and why can't it handle the processing and analytics requirements of data in real time? And that answer to us is simple. It's that they simply aren't parallel. And so while the concept is called shared nothing, the reality is that every server needs to work and share with every other server in a shared nothing cluster. So as clusters grow, they create more internal traffic coordinating their activities, and then they start to depend on each other, which makes it really difficult as failure rates start to increase at scale. And at some point, they just break down at scale. 
These shared nothing systems weren't designed to handle millions of microservices. And they especially weren't designed to handle updates to data in real time. And this is why transactional databases and even event streaming platforms don't scale particularly well. This problem that was created by partitioning is of course a non-starter if you're gonna build a real-time AI computing system. And that's because a flood of data is coming in from the world that needs to be contextualized and decisioned on in GPU time. So while storage and database computing frameworks come in and out of the market all the time, systems architectures rarely change. They're basically generational. And in 2016, we determined that we need to build the next generation of architecture for the age of hyperscale AI. We started by using new fast network protocols that we realized would make it possible to disaggregate processors from SSDs in order to provide fast access to data over standard commodity networks that was just as fast as if the SSD was on the same motherboard as a processor. So now we can build simple and stateless computers that run the logic of the AI operating system and then have other machines in the data center that hold the data of these systems. So think of these as simple servers or fault tolerant JBODs that store and present very low cost, high density NVMe flash drives out onto the network of containers that run the AI operating system. With this, every CPU and every GPU can get access to every single SSD in parallel all at the same time. But then we realized that we needed to solve the problem of partitioning. And so what we invented was a new transactional data structure that lived at the SSD layer. A data structure that makes it possible not only for all the processors to see all the system's data, but also to know how to write into the data layer by also seeing all of the data's transaction state. And so what does this mean? Well, it means that you can now build environments that have hundreds of thousands of processors and exabytes of data where no two CPUs or GPUs ever need to talk to each other to read or write into the system. What we've built is the world's first truly parallel systems architecture by eliminating the need for partitioning, which then eliminates the need for east-west traffic across hyperscale clusters. We've just solved the problem of scale by making something fundamentally simpler. Now we call this concept DAIS, which stands for Disaggregated and Shared Everything. And for the first time, you can read and write into a system at any level of scale and then read from that data in real time. What we've broken is the trade-off between analytics and transactions. And that means that you can ingest data in real time, enrich that data in real time, and have other machines access and analyze that data in real time. What we've also built is one of the world's most resilient systems. None of the machines that are running the AI operating system need to communicate with each other at all. So as the clusters get bigger, no failure creates a ripple effect across the cluster and any machine can take over any other machine's responsibilities. Days clusters run at nearly 100% uptime, even when dealing with millions of cores and exabyte levels of data. Now we can also build much more cost-effective systems our disaggregated and shared everything architecture essentially lays the foundation for new storage efficiency codes that can, for the first time, do things like globally compress all of your data and that can bring the delivered cost of data protection down to almost nothing thanks to our new global erasure codes. And when you put these together, it's counterintuitive, but the only way to bring the cost of storage underneath the cost of the hard drive is actually to use flash. And that's because random access media is required to run all these new algorithms that we've invented. And customers benefit because they need one half to one third of the storage infrastructure to store their data. And now, because it's affordable, all of your data can be made available in parallel to real-time AI applications. So most of our early customers thought of days as this blueprint for next generation web scale storage. But what we've really been building is an operating system for a thinking machine where the first application of this concept was just to serve data at extreme levels of scale. As mentioned, just as operating systems run all the way down to the hardware level, so does the vast AI operating system. We get as close to the bare metal level as possible in order to get the greatest efficiency and scale out of infrastructure. And that means that days clusters can be built on on-premises infrastructure across a variety of popular hardware platforms. And it's also deployable in leading public cloud platforms. With days as the foundation, We've then taken it and built a set of core system services on top that make 
the vast AI operating system, a trusted system of record for enterprise data. And that includes all of the enterprise data management and data governance capabilities that serious organizations require, including a full identity management system that unifies the agent and the context and the source data layers all together. It includes end-to-end -end encryption that allows customers to even own and rotate their own encryption keys. It includes support for no overhead data snapshots, as well as data replication tools that customers can use for disaster recovery. It includes multi-tenancy that makes it possible to create full data isolations and tenant level tools for at scale service delivery, uh, as well as support for quality of service, which then can be plumbed all the way down to the tenant or the microservice or job level. And finally, there's also operating system level database services such as a native data catalog, as well as native auditing tools that run natively in the system. So now we're onto the fun stuff, compute, storage, and database. I'll start at the compute layer just because this is the newest part of the vast AI operating system. The data engine is the compute environment of the vast AI operating system. It's a containerized distributed computing framework that supports a scalable Python runtime and can also run across modern CPUs and GPUs. The runtime is designed to auto-scale functions as well as microservices at extreme scale across clusters or even across data centers. The data engine can queue and schedule workloads within the machine, but is also designed to work with our customers' Kubernetes clusters if they don't want to deploy additional isolated infrastructure. In these cases, the data engine essentially auto-scales workloads onto our customers' GPUs and CPUs. The data engine is also engineered for real-time event and stream data processing. So, it comes with a native eventing infrastructure that can trigger functions that customers themselves can program. And these triggers can do things like create vector embeddings, they can annotate data, they can deploy AI agents or AI models, or even send external messages out to other systems as events happen within the cluster. The message broker is Kafka compatible, and that makes it familiar as well as easy to integrate with your existing tools. Now, embedded into the engine are two primary services that run artificial intelligence within the machine. VAST's Insight Engine is the service that generates context from data by using AI embedding models that can automatically cut up unstructured data into chunks and then create signatures on top of that data using vectors that are then stored natively in the VAST database. The Insight Engine provides developers with a low-code data curation environment that extracts context from unstructured data that can then be retrieved as RAG tools by other AI agents. And because we've tightly integrated the source data environment, which is your files and your objects, with the vector data store that can be written to in real time, that makes it possible to now solve critical challenges of data and security atomicity at scale. With the vast AI operating system, changes to source data and source data permissions are immediately brought up to the vector level so that RAG pipelines are always getting a real time and secure view of their data. The cousin to the Insight Engine is the new Vast Agent Engine. Now, if Insight Engine contextualizes your data for AI, Agent Engine deploys AI using this context. Agent Engine is the system's AI agent deployment environment that equips agents with the runtime environment and all of the tools that are needed to power agentic pipelines. So, using a low-code agent deployment studio, it's now easy for users to design the triggers the agents and the functions that they want to build within their pipelines. Just select the reasoning models that you want to use, then create a set of tools that agents can invoke based upon your system prompts. Just like everything VAST does, the Agent Engine tool server is designed to adhere as close to standards as possible. Initially, users can build tools that are compatible with the MCP standard that was introduced by Anthropic. But over time, other standards will also be considered like A to A. Tool definitions are super flexible and nearly anything in the system can be a tool that's used by AI agents. Agent engine tools are essentially programmable and can be contextualized with unique names as well as descriptions of their purpose, tags as well as descriptive capabilities that explain to AI models how to use them. So we've been creating prepackaged tools in the platform that can make it easy to feed agents with data and actions. Tools such as tools that know how to traverse S3 buckets or file system directories, database search tools, web search tools, tools that can audit data as well as audit systems access, tools that are even other agents or even other functions that can be invoked by an agent. 
The Agent Engine is designed for pipeline fault tolerance as well, and using a sophisticated distributed scheduling mechanism that we've built, we can ensure that every function is completely resilient. Finally, Agent Engine is designed for deep observability. What we've built is this distributed tracing system that allows for organizations to log, to audit, and observe any event in real time. And our unique distributed approach provides developers and users with a simple view into even the most complex data pipelines. So with this new architecture, the next question is, what data are we computing on? And this is the data platform layer of the vast AI operating system. So let's start with the storage environment. The Vast Data Store is our distributed storage environment that is designed to store and serve all of your files, all of your objects, and even your block storage volumes. The Data Store is revolutionary in that it combines the scale of the most scalable storage system in the world with the speed of an all-flash platform and the economics of an archive. It's this universal storage system that eliminates the compromise for all of your data. Now the data store features high performance support for all major enterprise protocols. File access is available via NFS and SMB, as well as GPU direct storage, and even an S3 compatible object storage server. Block storage is made available over our support for NVMe over TCP. And on the other hand, the vast database is the tabular environment of the system. And that's designed to break trade-offs of transactions and analytics. It's a system that combines the performance of the world's fastest event bus with the query performance of the world's fastest vector search systems or the world's fastest columnar data warehouses, all at a cost and a scale point that has only ever been associated with the lowest cost data lakes. So customers can store data in database either via SQL or high performance implementations of Kafka for streaming applications, uh, or using a Python library that presents data structures over the network using Apache Arrow. Data is then queried either via SQL or via similarity search when searching on vectors within the VAST database. And because the VAST database was born in the era of Flash, it can deliver tremendous acceleration versus legacy approaches that are hard drive bound. And that enables additional compute levels of savings that were never before possible. As you can see, there's just so much involved in building an environment that enables tomorrow's agents to work, to communicate, and to discover. Our realization is that we needed to reduce infrastructure sprawl in order to expand the potential of AI. And so what we've been building is a single unified operating environment as the OS of thinking machines. Now, nearly a decade in, we've only now laid a comprehensive foundation for this new wave of computing. One computing platform for all of your AI workloads one system that extends from the edge to the AI factory, one unified data environment for structured and unstructured data, and one tier to access all of your data in real time. Going forward, there's still so much that we want to do to help realize the full potential of artificial intelligence, but we'll save that for a later discussion. Thank you for joining, and we look forward to working with you on your AI journey.